Hello everybody, today is September 30th and I'm reading from 1 John chapter 4. This is probably the love chapter of the Bible. Now a lot of times we think of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 as the love chapter, but in actuality, here is an example of a man that's been transformed by the power of love. Because John, we read about in the Gospels that they're going into a community and uh, Jesus is being rejected. And what does John say? John says, hey, listen, uh, Jesus, would you like for us to call fire down from heaven and destroy them all? And uh, Jesus was appalled by their response, but you can see they'd not yet been transformed by the love of Jesus. And this love got a hold of John to such an extent that he's, a just, he's just a different man. And so when we read this chapter and we find that this, uh, this heart of a man that previously would have destroyed everybody with fire now is speaking about, hey, listen, th our lives must be governed by, uh, by, the, by the appetite of love. And uh, he begins by saying, hey, listen, don't believe every spirit. You're going to have to learn to test the spirit. Try the spirits to see if they be of God. I suggest to you that their spirits are going to be either the spirit of man, the spirit of the devil, or the spirit of the world, or, on, and, or the spirit of self. And you're going to have to discern between those spirits. We're going to have to come to the point of trying the spirits, and the word of God becomes the backdrop, and the nature of Christ becomes the backdrop in, uh, in testing that spirit. In fact, he says, listen, one way the test is to find out, is that spirit... Uh, does that spirit confess Christ? Does that spirit in, embrace Christ as having come in the flesh that that is God? And you see, we have to believe that Jesus, born of a virgin, was the God-man, that he's fully God, but he took on human flesh. And, uh, and, and his, the Bible's telling here that, listen, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh um, is, is of God. And, uh, and it's a mark, it's a trait. It's a characteristic that we look at. And, uh, and yet at the same time, he talks about the, that, the, that the spirit of Antichrist is in the world. Now, we know the Antichrist may very well be present right now in the world sometime, somewhere at this hour. But we know for certain that the spirit of Antichrist is everywhere. That which is a stands against, against God, anti, against God. That's what this would be. And that spirit of Christ is everywhere in the world today. And, uh, and he's telling us, listen, um, we, to, to overcome... You and I have got to understand what verse 4 says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You and I are to live as overcomers. We're to live the victorious Christian life. And we can only do that by an awareness of who Jesus is and, and the love of Christ that's gotten a hold of our life. And, uh, and, so, and, and greater is he that's in the world, in us, than he that's in the world. And, and, and once we begin to recognize our identification and who we are, it makes all the difference in our lives. And, uh, and then he introduces this part of love, let, let, that we're to love one another. And that if you're of God, you're going to be governed by love. You're going to be driven by love. You see this in verse 7. Love is of God. And, uh, and it becomes the nature. We're not wanting fire to come down. Some of the people that we look at in the world and think, boy, they stand in absolute opposition to what I believe and what I embrace. And some of the stuff they do is absolutely twisted. But at the same time, our, we don't want to see them harmed. We don't want to see them destroyed. We are driven by a compulsion of love. In fact, we're reminded of that, that, that we have been touched by that love. Look in verse 9. This is the love God manifests towards us. God sent his only begotten son uh, and, and that he loved us before we loved him. And, and it's that kind of a love that governs our life. In fact, verse 11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And, uh, and, and so the marking characteristic of a Christian here is love. Now we understand the previous chapter that it's, we're going to obey. We're not going to want to live in sin. We're not going to want to live in a way. But we're going to be governed by this absolutely desire to forgive. We're going to forgive other people readily, just as God has forgiven us. We're going to forgive other people quickly, as Jesus did. And even if they don't ask us forgiveness, we release them and we forgive them. This is the nature, the mark of the Christian life. And then he says, if we love one another, God abides in us. It's the mark of the Christian life that you and I will be governed by this. His love has been perfected in us and is being perfected, right? It's not a completed process, uh, uh, but it's a process by which we're going through. Verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. This is the confession of our, of our lips by what's in our heart. We're, we're lining ourselves up with God. And, uh, and then finally, down in verse 17, he says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we have boldness in the day of judgment um, because he, uh, as he is, so we are in this world. 
Uh, there, John's describing this remarkable transformation that's taken place in our life. There's no fear in love, and uh, perfect love casts out fear. And, and he talks about that, that fear is torment. And, and yet Christ has come that he might eradicate that, that we could live in a confidence knowing we are sons and daughters of God, that we are joint heirs with Jesus. And, and this confidence enables us, in verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. And so it's, it's just this, the power that uh, we, we give back to God, the love that he's given to us, and we give out to others the love that so we, we certainly didn't deserve in our own life. And uh, verse finally, in verse 20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brothers, he's a liar. Um, we are being transformed by love. And I don't understand this. I don't understand the love of God. But I know one thing, that while I'm not where I want to be, I'm thank God I'm not where I once was, and that I'm being transformed by this love. It's a lifelong process. I am saved, I'm being saved, and I'll be saved. But the fact is, is that in this chapter, John has given to us the distinction between worldly love and agape love, the love of God. I pray today that you'll walk in the authority of the love that God has given you, that you'll be marked by that love and that you will live with a confidence and you won't have that fear wondering because fear torments, but that you'll walk in an absolute surrender to the love of God that flows through you and will touch those that are around you. May this day be filled with that kind of a love.